I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. And today we've got Rob and we've got Neegs, and we're going to talk about all the happenings around the world in crypto and Divi. How's it going, guys? It's going good. I just want to say Neegs wouldn't let me wear my face tattoos, so I'm putting them on for a second. Ha! Face tattoos. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now I'll go back. <laughs> hey, rather, everyone. Rather you not look like a criminal from some of these countries <laughs> sent him. yeah i try to come up with a new character each week but i can't but i couldn't do it this week i got banned yeah some people still like the like the avatar some people don't yeah and it's the same <laughs> character you just add face statues on it and put another suit <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't suit, change anything. My suit, my, the suit collection is limited. <laughs> yeah, and think about mine. I just have that That's one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you could just wear the old man sweater like I've got. You should. Yeah. We should I, all I, wear I actually, the same sweater next week. I actually <laughs> went and looked into it, and I spent I spent some time, and then I was like, okay, I think I think that one can can be okay, and then I realized it was the same as voice. Yeah. <laughs> so people can see when I'm drinking coffee because look, I'll go like this. You close one eye. <laughs> and I'll lean over like that. So every time I do that, you guys can count how many yep. times I feel like a bingo chart. Or right. how many times the voice says exactly. If you can get it all the way across. Oh, yeah, we should have a that. whole bingo card for that. That'd be oh great. wow. I say that's so. <laughs> it's an affirmation that I'm agreeing with what you're saying. I wholeheartedly I feel that way. <laughs> All right. We can we, we can we can uh also put on there Rob laughs at his own joke or other <laughs> things like that. <laughs> All right, shall we get started? Let's talk about the market. Yeah, let's talk about the market. Let's talk about all sorts of good things, ETFs and such. Yeah, so the last two weeks we've seen a few things. There's a lot of chatter about Ethereum ETFs. Do you when you guys want to talk about that? Yeah, that's right. So exactly like the Bitcoin ETF, uh, some people now were waiting for the Ethereum ETF and then there was obviously some speculation. It actually uh, came a little more as a surprise for um, the majority of uh, people who are interested in crypto. It wasn't uh, that much anticipated like um, like for Bitcoin. Like It was anticipated, but the date wasn't anticipated to come that fast. And now if I understand correctly, it's not they've been approved, but then um, they don't. Uh, they didn't release all uh, the rules for that, so I think it is still a little bit pending. And what we see is that um, on the market, it didn't really uh, push much anything. I mean, right before we heard about uh, the potential approval, um, Ethereum started to pump, right? Started to go up a lot. Yeah. But then um, the, the news came, and then nothing really happened. The whole market started to settle a little bit. And it's kind of of in sideways since since then. So, yeah, what was passed was Fit Twenty One, right? That's what they call it, a Fit Twenty One yeah, bill. That, that was one that they passed. So there's a couple of things that happened. There was the I think the overturning of SAB. It's the Staff Accounting Bulletin, mm. and it was uh, a pivot in how Bitcoin would be treated by lawmakers and regulators. I don't want to dive down too deep into it because uh, there's articles and articles, but it's called SAB One Twenty One. And then there was FIT21, which is, makes changes into the regulation of crypto, um, and it, it allocates a jurisdiction over uh, assets and venues between the Securities Exchange Commission and the CTFC. Yeah. Um, that was supposed CFTC. to be, yeah, that was supposed to be good for crypto. Mm -hmm. um, just getting clarity, is, I think, is, is more of what that's really doing. Uh, and then the, to me, the big news there was Biden being against it, but saying he won't veto it. The three of these things together just feels like a huge, like maybe upheaval is the wrong word, but at least maybe a wave, a big wave that pushed crypto better, at least in America. Like maybe we're getting to a place where I don't have to be scared each time I do something crypto-ish, um, either as a business <laughs> or as a person. I think somebody's <laughs> watching you <laughs> and i think that's the first yeah. big step right like until now every different uh, regulations that passed wasn't really wasn't really looking great so now it's really it's really looking like there is um 
some desire to support um, the crypto industry in US. Um, yeah. And uh, it really, it really sounds good. There was also um, the Libertarian Convention and uh, both oh, yeah. candidates there. Um, they both talked about being positive about crypto, um, rejecting CBDC. So it, it does look like overall there is a, there is a movement that seems to go in the positive direction in US, which would be really... So just think only crypto. because you're a French guy living in Switzerland, neither of those are the libertarian candidate. They were I know. both yeah. trying. There's there's actually like I think six. Uh uh and you know, this other guy, Chase Oliver, is the guy who uh yeah. who got it, got it. But uh libertarian can candidates have always been pro crypto and RFK and 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 uh Donald Trump going there basically was their time to say, hey, we're pro-crypto, even though Trump has really never shown it before. Um, I don't That's think. not true. I mean, didn't who didn't he release or somebody close to him release those <laughs> Trump tokens? Yeah, that was an NFT, mean, right? I mean, the like Trump NFT. Ago, but... I don't mean like recently, but yes. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I doubt he was so about that's love of crypto, right? <laughs> that's <Yeah>. supporting. <laughs> but, and maybe yeah. that's not related to him. I followed it not at all. How about that? So yeah. that, I, I'm yeah, not no, really I'm, big uh, me the too. NFT um, I mean, I'm just encouraged to see that I hate it. I like, I, I just want them like the thing should be, I should be able to buy whatever I want whenever I want, no, no matter what it is. That's, that's the libertarian pr uh, position. Correct. Correct. And we're getting to a place where, well, you can, as long as this, this, and this is true. So that's regulated and that's not really any fun. I think um, I think that's what it comes down to. In the yeah. U.S., the regulatory standards are: I know what's best for you, but it's yeah. it's all it's all bleed over with. You know, I'm protecting everyone, and I'm doing yeah. this. I'm this gatekeeper for these things, and I'm I'm actually painting a brush right now. I'm just doing that with my hand. You can't see it, but <laughs> it's it's protecting people from the. F Look, it's two things: it's greed that caused. Mm -hmm the reasons behind the regulatory actions a hundred years ago, right? A hundred, a little less than that, but those situations exist today where at least in the U S people don't want to take responsibility for their actions. There are criminals who then will say whatever they can say to get you to give them money. There's those two situations and those two groups come together. The, the, the bad guys, the ones who trick people into, into giving them stuff and the, other people who are just looking at putting their money into something that's that inbuilt i just want something as easy as possible and i and i hate to say that because a lot of people get involved in crypto even today whether it's nfts whether it's coins whether it's icos before um initial exchange offerings you know those kinds of things <laughs> a lot of people got in because it's like put in a hundred dollars come out with a lombo <laughs> I mean, so right. there's... the thing i don't like is like the <laughs> stuff that where people are doing bad things like ftx or whatever to in my head or the way i view it is like that that part of it isn't crypto at all right none of it anything yes, when, yes. once it's custodial yeah then you know i I, I think it's fine. Like, yeah, put protections there to prevent bad people. But as we get into the side chains and, and more and more technology comes out where it all like an, an exchange happens or a store mm -hmm. happens or whatever, and it, and none of it is custodial. What, what I fear is like, they're going to be getting in there and trying to regulate that too, because you made it. Yeah. Not because you ever are holding anybody's assets, right? So Divi in particular has always tried very hard wherever he can to not custodialize funds. Um, and as the technology gets better, we'll be, you know, we'll be able to do th things like this. We're about to come out with side chains that ha can do all of these different things without take without your money being in somebody else's hands the whole time. So what, what I fear is they're going to put all this stuff in, they're going to conflate crypto with all this custodial crap that, you know, where bad guys should go to jail. Yeah. And where if it's crypto and, and it's it's the entire services are non-custodial what, what i'm what i personally am fearing is when i said we uh what i'm meaning is somebody you know creates the code and and encourages people to de deploy nodes on a on a side chain right so now there are people who are doing this there's there's yeah. you know, individuals doing this and the side chain you know performs this function or whatever i'm afraid they're going to go after those people
um th that's the thing i'm worried about like, and we've seen it with uh like with the samurai wallet kind of thing yeah um now those guys were a little outrageous in their advertising i have to admit <laughs> but if, uh if that's look what i'm worried Fit about 21 which just passed right or it yeah. wasn't it wasn't rejected so you're talking about the basics of it are they're trying to decide on whether something is decentralized or not it's very broad on which their terms are for decentralization but essentially they're trying to fit decentralized items right decentralized chains yeah. coins under the cftc and centralized if i said that correctly under the sec yeah you can have a blockchain uh, is it really truly a blockchain that's the whole debate if it's centralized um and i i think that's that's the weird kind of gray area we get in um i think today we can say that everyone has said no that you can have somewhat centralized blockchains i may be a purist and say i don't think you should call yourself a blockchain unless you're decentralized yeah. but then again you have side chains which may be private side chains um and what it comes down to if we look at just fit 21 and i'm not an expert in this this regulatory bill here um but i think what they're saying is is that no issuer or any affiliated person controls 20 percent or more of the asset or it's voting power what does that mean right. mining power or or right. decisions made for the blockchain so i mean in a side chain or any blockchain that's brand new side chain or blockchain if it launches today usually the developer has the most control over it immediately so it's yeah. always centralized satoshi was centralized when it was just him and later just how two people running the blockchain and then of course you start adding those people it's totally well it's always becoming more and more decentralized um as divi or dash or litecoin or any of these blockchains right so yeah so, it, as i said i think it is um it is really going in the right direction because previously any different regulation was not making any difference between mm -hmm. custodians and non-custodial uh, technologies right sure so mm -hmm. i obviously we're not we're not there yet but the difference that they are already making show that there is at least a little bit of understanding of i of how it works and we could hope or yep we could expect or at least hope that uh, the next the next steps will continue in that direction um in reality the um, the market is asking for regulation, right? Like when you have regulations, insurance can come there. Uh, big institutions can come there because now they have insurance. Yeah. Like you have a whole part of the economy that can now uh, take part in that that part of the market. And obviously, um, it is why it is it is interesting for crypto. And I think that's what we talked about. I think two or three videos ago, where we were saying that while these are not really crypto thing and even opposed to crypto in some ways um that they are what the market is today and so there needs there needs to be those solutions that come and having some regulations that do not impact um trustless and non-custodial technologies will will definitely be the goal and if that really comes to uh, maturity right like a a good what we could expect as a good result um, would actually strengthen the side chains technology that we have compared sure. to the interoperability technology that are currently being looked upon right with the centralized smart contract it, mm -hmm. we actually have a technology that is going that is not using that and so completely exempt from um being at risk from those regulation unless they really attack completely decentralized and trustless um solutions yeah, yeah I, I don't have expectation it'll get better i have hope <laughs> um I, I think people are mostly looking for for clarity rather than regulation like uh like just i don't want to you know I, these companies and individuals don't want to feel like doing this thing is has the potential to get you in trouble that doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as i want it regulated uh 
that that's my position. Like that's the way I feel about it. Like I want to feel safe that it's okay for me to just go ahead and do this. And when they do it, when they try to take the position, yeah, it's okay for you to do it. There's always this, but, or however, or unless, which is you got to do it this way. Um, and that's how yeah. everything is done. So there's no expectation. It won't be done that way. I just personally, I really just get, I hate really dislike it. Um, but you know, I don't think you can expect anything different. Yeah. Yeah. And the SAB is, is, is obviously all of it is better because in the, in the respect that it's trying to prevent situations like FTX, right? Yeah. Because those safeguardings, the centralized or decentralized, um, the gray area for the new coiners. I think, I think when we talk about existing crypto people, they understand this. Obviously, existing people could see that Celsius wasn't a good idea. Yeah, I never got I mean, into that. I mean, <laughs> correct. I mean, it yeah. takes an amount of knowledge and it takes an amount of experience, right? It's That's wisdom, essentially, in these kinds of things. And this isn't, please, if anybody's listening, I'm not being critical of the fact that you may have lost things in Celsius. But there were clear signs from these, from these, from a point of view, through experience, the same thing would be true with FTX. There's reasons why I didn't participate in FTX. There's reasons why I didn't participate in Celsius. That risk adverse, you could say, personality that I have also <clears throat> limits me in high risk, high return situations. So there's all sorts of things that go into those spider, spidey sense signals that um that's a double-edged sword right i didn't lose anything but then of course you may have invested in or bought into other things like tokens or nfts and you had a right five hundred thousand well, I mean, percent gain it's a rare <laughs> person that that didn't get burned at all i got burned bad on stake count and that was the last time oh, the, i did everything yeah, yeah I, that's the last time i did anything custodial like Rob i have, is gonna punch me now see that's what I'm I, yeah, no, I have, I have, ex I have extreme skepticism for anything custodial. Um, but sometimes you have to, right? Like, so, uh, you know, anytime you want to convert into dollars, there's a custodial path there and you, you, you don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Your, your, your on-ramp is custody. So no matter yeah. what you're going into fiat, from yeah. fiat, you're going into some custodial situation. The minute a wire transfer and ACH happens, somebody somewhere has custody of both, or or at least access to both your cash <laughs> and, yeah, your and your crypto. Yeah, <laughs> it's just that's the way it is. So yeah. there is a custodial situation. Yeah, until we get to the place where we can start just paying people in crypto, there you have to now. I know a lot of people were using uh, like Tether as their currency, like in, like there's a big articles about that, like in Argentina, because their currency sucked so bad, sure. right? That it was better to just stay in dollars and stay in crypto versions of dollars. Frankly, mm -hmm. I think they're using the Tron Tether, which I'll also never get, but sure. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it's um, a fee situation because Tron, of course, is so, um, has such a low... Yeah. Maybe it has no, but uh, well, it's uh, fees I, and speed, right? Yeah. That's what you get for fees having and speed, a, exactly. a DPoS uh, system there. So mm -hmm. I, I understand it. And I, I don't think people got hurt. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I haven't looked into that. I just know, I think if people were getting hurt regularly doing that, I think they wouldn't, they would have stopped. But I know they were using that and that was like the way. Um, well, so, if you look at, if you look at now, we're on a totally different subject, but if you, you bring up Tether, Tether is a centralized <clears throat> representation of your money, right? I mean, there's no no matter what right. you say, Tether is centralized. It can mint coins. It holds yep. the cash. It's everything. So that would be something that would be held under. If you're looking at the other uh, the standards for Fit 21, that would be mm -hmm. something that that is would be under the SEC most likely. Yep. Um, that asset is massive. If you look at Coin Market Cap. And you look at the volume of Tether and all its versions of Tether, it's a freaking monster. 
Yeah. Um, you know, so I think Tether provides a utility through all these blockchains that it's on. It's no longer on Omni, which was, of course, the kind of like the layer over Bitcoin as much. I think it's still there. But um, yeah, it's ETH, it's Tron, it's, it's everywhere. See, Polygon. I think it's a great um, example of what we were talking about when we were saying that some things sometimes are not crypto or adverse to the the idea of crypto. But then they actually help crypto develop and yeah. basically reach people. And Tether yeah. is a perfect example of that. Without Tether, the, the whole market would have a lot less liquidity. Uh, it would be a so lot true. harder yeah. to to make those moves. So it is it is the way it works. We need to have uh, technologies that are kind of in between, so that they help move this technology forward. Basically, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you look at tether itself by volume um overall as it's helping blockchains like ethereum provide some utility the volume is massive i mean it's it's yeah, it's, it's unimaginable how much it supplies just it's a just little number it, go ahead sorry <laughs> yeah just a little number uh tether uh 24 yeah. hour volume is 63 billion and the 24 hour volume of the overall crypto is 81 right wow right. so yeah. it's really <laughs> just way like most of the volume is coming from that you can add usdc to that yeah. which is another six so yeah, yeah. yeah most of the stable coins enable the the market basically. where's yeah. die in there <laughs> i don't <laughs> think it's very high <laughs> No, die isn't. <clears throat> so last yeah, thing I mean, on the market, I think, mm -hmm. is uh, that uh, Neegs, you should talk about this because you're the one who brought it up. Is is the strange, uh, 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 Caitlyn Jenner thing? Oh yeah, that's right. That's kind of yeah. a follow up from um, the um, topic where we had like the two, um, the candidate for the you know the U.S. election going yeah. into the Libertarian Party. Um, so obviously one of those was Trump, as we mentioned, and right after that, a Caitlyn Jenner account. So first of all, a very important warning. We have no idea if it is a scam or not. It has all the features of a scam, and that's kind of why we want to bring it here. So right after uh, Trump basically announced his uh, positive, um, uh, his positive vision on crypto and um, being against CBDC, uh, Caitlyn Jenner decided to launch a Jenner coin, a Jenner token. And mm -hmm. it is it is very strange. Again, look at it like as a case study if you go, if you go there. Just look at the Twitter account. Um, it, it is pretty insane. Uh, there are videos, and we don't know if it is AI generated, if the account has been has been hacked, or if it if it is just a pure a pure scam. I mean, it is very confusing. The law currently seems to not allow that from a U.S. citizen. So that that's very confusing to us. That's why it's either because it, it's either a deep fake, and you know, it's not either a, a a deep fake or a scam. It's either a deep fake and a scam project, or we think, or I think, somebody's going to court because like all the things like I'm yeah. I'm wor I worry about in doing crypto in the United States, like that thing is that. <laughs> it's exactly right. that. So it's it was really bizarre. It, it looks like it. I, I don't. It, it can't be something in the middle. It, it's either somebody going to court or it's a scam. So. <laughs> It, it looks confusing. it looks extremely it looks extremely scammy. The it places it was launched on, the way it was launched, the way it was advertised, the videos, like everything looks like a scam. Uh, but it but it has been ongoing for a few days now. So yeah. it is uh, it is confusing. Of course, be extremely careful. But it kind of shows two very different aspects of uh, what's happening in crypto on one side the regulation and kind of the adoption and now that that other thing where uh, some famous people kind of launch token and you don't really know where it's coming from you don't know if it's a scam um i mean most likely uh, has a lot of chance to be one in any case yeah um it's always important to look at use case right it, it's really what you want to 
what you want to look at when you look so, at a coin. You want to look at what they want to achieve. If they actually achieve something that is uh, that is necessary for the economy, for the industry. Um, otherwise, uh, there is yeah, it's probably just a temporary the, scam. That thinking completely. Like I'll, I'll say it again. I I don't under, I never I will never understand meme coins. What you know what you buy them for because uh, they don't do anything like you just said. So it doesn't actually mean you have to look for the coin to do anything. Um, uh, but people are having fun with them. So there's that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. It's I think it's speculation, right? It's just and, so and that's confusing. also how you... Sorry. Go ahead. I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to tell you if you're listening to this and Rob and Neegs will have a different opinion. I'm not going to say you can't get involved in something, have it go to the moon, get out of it and make money. I'm not going to tell you that's not going to happen because we know that can happen all over the place if you get in the right place at the right time. The fact is, is these are all just garbage. They're There's no value Every one in of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's right, right, either but... a total scam and it's totally illegal or it's totally garbage. It makes no difference in between, yeah. but people will pump what they people pump. It's, yeah. it's just crap. No, but that I think it's important to talk about why right like what what creates that is pure speculation right and in crypto what initially the speculation behind crypto is the expected utility that is going to come to to that project that you are investing into right mm -hmm. and so um something that uh, users usually don't really understand like they they feel like they're buying shares of a company or they feel like Really, it's it's connected to, to the project, but in fact, a crypto is more like an economy from from a country, right? And um, if you take DV for example, it it's like again, it's like the DV country, right? And if you have the if you own some DV, you own like if you were owning dollars, right? And so the only reason that it is expected to be worth more later is that this economy is going to be more used it's going sure. to be more relevant in the future right now we went a little bit away from that because speculation can also feed itself right and so those meme coins they're not going up because um there is an intended utility that everybody believes will be impossible to miss later no they're going up because they believe they will go up and so it is we, we've come to a time now where it's not really related to crypto. It's kind of a trading thing. And those things are not really related. It, it's really it's difficult. It's trading for... cards. You're you're we're expecting these it's yeah, really it's no different than that. It's trading cards. We're expecting that these kinds of meme coins or NFTs, all these things related to these kinds of things will have some sort of value if they don't make more. <laughs> Right? It's like, yeah. you're right. Yeah, um, if I get the RTK, it has a specific value. Um, it's no different than programs that encourage, you know, your, your, your clients to stay with you because they get something special. In this case, you get to buy that something supposedly special and hope that it has a value later on. You're right. We should have the right to speculate on totally. what we want to speculate on. I am totally free minded like that i i just i'm just disappointed that we jump into these things and maybe it's because i look at these things and i go i think it's i think it's fake i think it's illegitimate i think it's just pure vanity i think it's a waste of time and then people make money so maybe i'm jealous i don't know <laughs> <laughs> we sound like a bunch of grumpy jealous what? people what? like that why is dog with hat worth worth all that? You know, it's not, <laughs> but it is. No, right? no, but it's in reality, it is. <laughs> I think that on both sides, right? Um, there is like the problem is mixing the two, right? Um, cryptocurrency and the evolution of this technology and things moving forward on in that direction is not the same as the meme coin mania and all that, and so. It is difficult where you have someone who actually invested in a crypto project and is not really interested into the technology because they're here just for the specu speculative aspect. So here sure. with the meme coins on one side and now the projects on the other side, at least, you know, 
there is a path to make things more clear that some are very clearly just investment products. And then the other ones are really just an economy that is supposed to, to develop and become bigger and more used. And, and that's what justified um, its growth. Um, if you actually look at the mechanism that led us here, it, uh, stakers or validators, they're compensated to secure the network, right? So that's yes. how really it started, uh, the way that people make money in crypto. And then people started to be more and more interested. And obviously you have appreciation of um, the price. But then again, it was never enough. In the 2017 era, you had all this liquidity pool token that started to come and provide a lot of yield. And this was kind of in between because... There is some utility that definitely needs to be rewarded there. However, a lot of the growth was actually the speculative aspect of the future growth of this utility through the um, liquidity token that was created out of thin air and, and just generated that, that money. And now we're completely away from that. There is not even in any utility attached to the meme coins. And it's just the branding, right? The branding is what makes people come and speculate on the future value of the asset. But I think the timing for quote unquote success of those projects will become shorter and shorter because yeah. obviously people would get more used to that and they will be more scared of when that you know mania is going to be over and it's, it's going to become shorter and shorter until it, I think it dies out. Maybe. Maybe I just, it's, yeah. it's, I have to admit, it's a little disappointing. It's like, if I invented rope and, and and all these things like you can use rope for, like you, you tie your boat up, you use it as a pulley, you use it for a pulley, all this kind of stuff. And what ended up happening was that almost everybody is using rope to stick up their nose. And then that's oh, it. No, they just walk around with rope their up their nose and they're all proud <laughs> that the rope is up their nose. And, uh, and you're sitting there like, rope does all this other cool stuff. Why are you sticking up your nose? <laughs> like, No, I understand. So but rope is like if you were in a community and whatever they got in contact before, they were stuffing it in their nose. Right. Why would you be surprised? Because that's what's yeah. happening, right? Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> now, we're, now we're coming around full circle. Even people who were Bitcoin miners speculated. The early Bitcoin miners who mined Bitcoin consumed their own electricity, used their local computers, yeah. burnt up their local computers, um, even Ethereum, those people who mined, they speculated that there was going to be some value in it, but it was based upon their work. And true proof of stake, it's still work-based. The point is, is that you speculate. The issue comes down to is what are we told to do with our crypto? This is a mistake, I think, but what, what is the common theme that we're told to do with our crypto? Hold it. Hold it. Hodl, whatever you want to yeah. say. <laughs> we're told to hold it. That is sticking it up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's all hodling is, sticking it up your nose and saying, and so there's some thought that if I hold it, which is yeah. an economic action, it's part of the economy. If I hold it, then it sort of, um, uh, reduces what's available in the market. And then, of course, those who want it will have to pay more for the limited availability. There's all sorts of things that are going on with these things. Bitcoin has been a hodl currency from day one because you, unless you're not a miner, are a hodler. That's mm. just what you do. And what are people told? It's going to be a million dollars someday. So it's a constant thing that we're doing. I think that there has to be the balance. And that's, again, bringing it back to you need to have some utility. Tether provides utility. That's a, maybe in some person's opinions a poor example. I think it's a good example. Again, we're not talking about whether we believe them or not. Um, it provides utility. There's something going on with it. You should use your crypto. That's my opinion. I use my crypto for things. Um, I may mine. I may... Uh, 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 validate, I may do something, but it should be in movement. That's a general economic principle. There should be velocity to something. And that keeps a stability in the market. I mean, that, and I'm going down another, I'm ranting now, so well, I'll I, stop. I, I but. mean, I'm with you on the use. I mean, we're, 
we're building a house in here in the Republic of New York and uh, which sounds nuts, but we're doing it. Um, and the builder will, will he'll, he'll accept Bitcoin. Um, he so, will. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, that is awesome. So that's, way. yeah, that, that, uh, and I, he won't accept other cryptos. <laughs> that's okay. But, that's okay. But he'll accept Bitcoin. And that, that, I mean, it's good for me. I don't have to trade it out. And, um, and it's much faster for me to just pay him with that. Um, so I, I'm pretty happy about that. I think that's probably what we should encourage is, is just in a general sense, we're talking about Divi and its utility. So yes, Divi should be used for utility. Divi should be hodled to whatever you want to do. You should validate blocks with it too. But it should, in some cases, you should reach out and ask for your retailers, your suppliers, your vendors, your contractors, if they take crypto. Yeah. Bitcoin or otherwise, you got to ask. Yeah. If you don't ask, people will not do anything but what the path of least resistance is, which is hand me a check. Yeah. Well, you know, ACH me the, the the balance. Give me your credit card. That's the path of least resistance. It's only a path of least resistance because people are not necessarily always set up to easily do such things. Yeah. But again changing from a cash society to a credit card society which is what the world has done that's a change because who asked we asked we asked as users do you take diners card right <laughs> gotta ask so let's move on to uh divi how about that sure yeah that's <laughs> right that's right um so the next the next topic is about um communication the refresh in communication so we started to talk about that i think about almost three months ago now and mm -hmm. um, we had some pretty strong opinion about why we wanted to do that and yeah we were going to go through why we wanted to do that and where we are what happened what is the result and and what's coming next so so basically what we wanted is um we thought and um, I think me first that the communication was not uh, appropriate to what we wanted to actually communicate to the outside. And one of the, the first thing is that Divi is, is lightweight. Um, Divi has actually a lot of different uh, unique features like the staking votes. And mm -hmm. it was not reflected in our communication. It was not reflected on our Twitter. Um, and I think that it was kind of a miss. So that was the first thing that, that we wanted to rebuild. Now, we, we also understand that um, it is not enough. So we also have a big place for the side chains, obviously, because it is the next, the next thing coming. However, we do believe that a lot of the things that DV built and the history of DV has to be highlighted, has to be present for people that um, are interested, who wants to look about the project. And, and this is why we really wanted to have a proper Twitter, um, proper YouTube and profiles everywhere that are up to date. And it, the last thing is obviously the website that uh, we don't have yet, but is the first, like the main point that everybody comes to when they are interested about a project, even if they spend like five minutes or one minute on it, um, it, it is all about how it looks, how it captures the attention of the user. So we really want all those things, the differences with, uh, versus other blockchain, uh, the pride in our product, the history, and sure. everything to figure in, our, in the website. Do, yeah. do you I want to that, add anything on that? Guys? Yeah, I, I think, just think we could go into right. each of those things. Like, let, yeah, let, sure. let's start out by talking about the differences um, specifically. We can go through all of those. Um, yeah. Um, you mentioned a couple, you know, that, you know, th it's a super lightweight blockchain. Like you don't need, if anybody has seen a modern Bitcoin miner, like I looked to get one out of the house and the, uh, we're off grid, but the, the solar infrastructure for me to have a miner running 24 seven was completely untenable. <laughs> like, sure. like there's just no way. Um, so it, they are power hungry devices. And if anybody's looked to run a validator for uh, ETH 2.0, Solana, um or even uh cardano those are meaty machines too um they are sure. they and they require you know some knowledge and so forth 
Divi has always been like the one thing that I really liked about it. There's a couple other blockchains that I enjoyed had the simplicity of, of Divi, but um, this one was definitely the best. What it takes to get a node up and running is extremely simple compared. Um, I mean, there's still people who are very um, uh, technophobic, I should say, who want to get involved. Uh, we help them, but but for the most part, it doesn't require a big machine. You can still use your computer. It's very simple. The lightweight part of it is is very unique amongst the the, the major the, the actual layer one blockchains that are out there. Sure, sure. That's I right. think that's unique. That's and critical, ahead. right? Yeah. Because it is it is the only way people actually can secure their own network, which is the whole idea behind blockchain, right? Like if you if you get and you need a specialized machine or even like a machine that you can get everywhere but still is very expensive to buy, the barrier for access is just too high. You can forget that you can you will now have people who will be securing their network. It's obvious that they will go through intermediaries, right? So having um having a blockchain that is able to be secured with a very simple hardware, I think yeah. it's critical for the sovereignty of people. Yeah. And they're also solving that by by delegation, right? So that that's how the other those other chains, Cosmos, Polkadot, EOS, all of them, you delegate your stake. And then those right. the well, people with those big machines are doing it for you. Oh, that's intermediaries. their type of crypto made easy, right? Yeah. I mean, if, if I can delegate, I don't have to do anything, but then it does centralize that power or if it's weighted, then there's a voting and then there's a governance on top of it. There's some mechanism in place that then chooses the yeah. right validator to do that. That's another type of, it's not necessarily 100% decentralized at that point. But will debate me on that, of course, because it's part of the protocol. But the fact is, is that it's not the same. <laughs> I mean, it is it is much better than the fiat system. It is not comparable. It Correct. is already great. Okay. It's just that um, we consider that um, this can be addressed through architectural choices that we decided to take. And we, we think that you don't have to go that route and again get into a system where you have intermediaries for the network to work. Um, we think that Again, it can be an intermediary situation, but mm -hmm. the idea is to have everyone to be able. Oh, I think Rob just died. Oh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> die. I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, you were like, you were like, really? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, with really being able to um, continue with the system that is scaling and doesn't have intermediaries i think is uh, is something that doesn't have to be um to be given up yeah i, 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 think, I agree and anybody I, who's who's done like polka dot uh, mm -hmm. this is one of many examples uh the the for me the biggest issue with delegation is like you don't have control over the staking anymore so for me it's happened many times on on, on polka dot um that uh, the fees changed so I go in and it's like 1% fee and I go check again and it's 10. Yeah. Um, that's annoying. <laughs> well, know? that means you have to trust the pool, yeah. the person who's, they say it's non-custodial, but it's temporary loss of custody, at least while it's out of your hands. It's, you can't spend it, right? In true proof of stake, you can spend yours whenever you want, but if it's at some someplace else, uh, you mean like it's at least ups? impermanent. Yeah. Yeah. It's impermanent. It's like, like any other, whether you're baking or whether you're in um, Cardano, you know, you're sending it off and they have the power, that pool has the power to change its percent on what it pays you. And that's okay. They should have that ability. Uh, it just, it's just strange to me. I don't yeah. Know. Well, it's just not in your power. Whereas when you're yeah. stake with, with Divi on your own node, cause it's lightweight, you have that. Um, so that's good. That's, that's one good thing that I can. So the next thing that, uh, that's unique about Divi is vaulting. Now there's other chains that say they have vaults, but it's not the same thing. Vaulting is our methodology of, of having somebody else or another computer, I should say, do the staking work, but the, but the funds 
are yours. Um, Correct. And that's the difference. There's no, there's no changing of fees. There's no, nothing like that happens. The, just the actual computational work happens somewhere else. Um, but, uh, but it's your vault. So it's not really a delegation. You have, if you, if you want to do this, you either have to fire up the, this, the, 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 the computer that's doing the work, or you yeah, got to pay somebody to use their computer either way. That's why you pay in the mobile wallet, uh, or, or actually either of the Divi labs wallets, I'm sorry, and either Divi, Divi wallet, um, you got to pay somebody to do the, the staking part, computational part, the validation part. Um, but the funds never leave you and you can do that yourself. Um, once again, it doesn't have to be you. It's, it's a pure kind of safety method of having uh, staking done. You That's right. It's, than I just did. it's just the fact they've set up a server. Yeah. And it's more that you are just remotely by cryptography working on that server through a permissioned key called a host key. It used to be called a manager key. And that allows you with your eyes closed on your head on your pillow far, far away through a cold technology that allows you to validate or that daemon, as Neegs would correct me, that daemon on that server uh, to mine blocks and validate those blocks. It is, it is purely, purely cold in that respect. And it's really, 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 really cool. Yeah, um, that's yeah. right. And solution for this. So yeah. one of the big difference, I think, um, is the approach of, because again, like you talked about being able to have a remote server or mm -hmm someone else staking for the other person. I think we need to clarify here the difference yes. with DPoS. And what you have in DPoS is the pooling system, right? Correct. Like whenever you delegate your staking power to that external point, you actually make now take part in a pool and then get part of the reward based on the structure that this person who is offering the pool service um, is actually setting, right? While on DV, you can have a remote server, but then if someone would be offering you the hosting, they don't have any power over your staking. They don't have no. any power over your funds. They can't impose fees. All of that would have to be an agreement between you and them. It's external. It's not, they have no power over your reward. And that's also something that um, it is kind of um, a funny situation users they come and they're like hey um can't you pay yourself on the reward and and in fact it is it is the whole thing right dv never will have any control over your reward so if there would have to be a payment you have to pay after and this is something that doesn't happen in those dpos because they have control over your reward so Let's whatever you receive is something that they accepted to send you. So it, it is a very different situation. Let's, let's clarify to Divi, the blockchain, which you participate on, you control your funds, you set up your vault, you control your activity, whether you use it close, that means in front of you on a solo machine, or whether you're nerdy and you set up a vault locally to you, whether you set up a vault virtually at a data center from afar, whether you use the optional crypto made easy inbuilt services, all you're doing and all you uh, would be paying for, whether you have a data center that you personally learned and set up yourself, whether you did it locally or, or, or the labs featured offerings is you're paying for a server. That's all you're doing. You're paying for hosting. And I, I, you know, to digress a little bit into another direction, I feel a little weird if, in situations to where I have to allocate my coins to somebody else. Then they take those coins as part of the governance. So in essence, they're using right. my inventory to uh, hopefully garner the right governance vote so that they can mine the block, right? Um, and then they have control over the funds and then pay me a portion. Does that not sound like it fails the Howey test? Uh, yeah. It, well, I don't know if, I, if I'm willing to speak publicly on that because I'm not an expert in any way. Yeah, neither that. am I. I'm just it does asking sound a like question. It, but um, to me, um, <laughs> but I, I don't have a near enough 
qualifications or experience. yeah it just it just feels <laughs> weird to me so yep. that's that's all i'm saying <laughs> yep, i agree um so as we covered that so now one of the other uh unique features of the divi blockchain um is the subscriptions and escrow feature however i like to put an asterisk on that because we actually haven't put out any tools to make it easy for people to utilize those two features yet and i haven't written an article on that yet um but I'm looking forward to the time when we can get past that so that people can, because it, it's extremely useful if you want to do a, a number of things where you want features of custody, um, and, but but don't want the custody part. So you basically yeah. put put funds into a space in the blockchain. Um, both the box. both parties have access to that space, and it's programmed to release funds either all at once or uh, or at a frequency based mm -hmm. on conditions. Um, and those conditions can be time, it could be some sort of agreements uh, or whatever. Um, and so, but again, we don't actually have tools to be able to set that up easily. And actually, Boyce, you're, you're actually working on a bunch uh, of things. You, you should probably talk on this now as to what we can expect uh, coming forward. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've been working on that Python script. I think we spoke about it a couple of uh, uh, updates ago. Um, it is, from all blockchain perspectives, a very complicated technology. I can't under, I can't underscore. I can't put enough bold or, or or highlight anything enough. The 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 technology that Random String created. How cool it is, but how complicated it is the goal of everything that we should do as the foundation should make crypto utility made easy that means that we should build features and functions examples tutorials and those kinds of things on top of it so others can do it i'm at that curve where it's at the earliest stage and i'm building this app man it's mind-blowing but it is true that that what rob described is that if you can imagine a box you can call it an address you can call it whatever you want that funds can go into something uh, that is, it is somewhat closely related to, uh, how about a, if I mix it all up, it's somewhat it's closely related to both multi-sig and atomic swap kind of weird things. They're, I'm not saying it's either of those technologies, but it's to the point to where it's, I'm working on it. That's all I'm going to say, but I want to <laughs> give a working example of a subscription once I have it finished. I have to manually do it first. I've written a script based upon how I believe it works. It doesn't work exactly the way I believe it works. So now I've got to go ahead and manually do it. The thing is, is that you should be able to go ahead and work with your vendors, work with your contractors, work with your retailers, work with anyone and say, hey, I want this work done. And um you could say at a certain time frame, block height, whatever, you can withdraw an amount out of this account. And as long as that's continuing and as long as everybody's agreeing, the emission uh, out of that account for that vendor will be possible. So it's very good, like let's say for a subscription platform, if there is a, a service that you want online, this is great because it's web technology at that point, that somebody could have a subscription. They don't have to pay everything all up front, but they can allocate some amount to an account. And that if you decide to cancel that service, you just go ahead and cancel that contract. So it's really, really cool how it works. I just need to make sure that I keep working on, excuse me, working on the example tutorial. I hope to put it into a graphical user interface written in TK Inter or QT or something. So therefore it's much more simplified. You know, that's what I'm goaling towards. It's yeah. really, really cool. That was and a I, whole lot of boring. People will gl gloss over at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so it'll be nice to, to kind of, uh, rev up that engine that part of the engine because uh uh and we'll get there because th when, once we start showing people how to use it i think people will use it um, and i think that really fits well with um what i think the three of us consider to be the objective of the foundation um which is like helping people use divi right yeah. so having features like subscriptions having um vendor integration some you know, web plugin to be able to use DV. 
some pro probably also some conversion mechanism because we all know that crypto is very volatile and so it's kind of complicated to to hold it for business so they need to have path to be able to use it so subscription is one of those examples <clears throat> that can really help businesses yeah. leverage huge TV. subscriptions yeah. are huge i think that's that's a, a business model <laughs> right yeah. you have cash you can have subscriptions when it comes to subscriptions that helps businesses even in the traditional banking world you can sort of project values of your offerings based upon your subscription model so it's this is a huge offering and opportunity for for users to both use and businesses to integrate yeah and it just gives an it's a different way of kind of looking at a financial tra transaction especially if you think of escrow like right now we hire somebody to do like if you're buying a piece of land right you put funds into escrow and you hire somebody basically to hold those funds so that both parties can see that the money is there well you, you know you don't need that person right in blockchain because you can use this technology both people can see the funds are there they um they move forward un under conditions or they get rescinded under conditions but both people can see it and that's uh that you know that's exactly what that person that we hire right now to do does um and same with subscriptions everybody can both sides can see that the the funds are there um and, you know if you if you how depending on how you set it up you can you can rescind the funds so that the subscription doesn't happen anymore. Otherwise the, the person can see the funds are there and perform the service that are required. It, 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 it makes the entire transaction, long-term transaction, um, more trustable and you don't need another person and pay another person for that. Um, that's the right. The thing and is, uh, I'm oh, sorry. Do you want to add to that? No, no. I was going to confirm, and then I was going to move to the to the lo next to the next yeah, item, which is yeah, the, yeah, the low yeah. fees. I think it's interesting to talk about the low fees because uh, one, the big aspect of why a blockchain gets high fees, it is because of the high traffic, right? The high traffic can come obviously because of the usage, but it also comes from the type of usage, right? So the more complex the operations you want your blockchains to, to do, then the bigger will be the transaction um, weight on the network, right? Like it will be bigger in terms of data. And so it obviously it will slow down, like the bigger your operations are, and now the more complex they are and the size of the block is limited. And so obviously now you get into limitations, which make that to compensate and to make sure that it doesn't get stuck, then you have mechanism that makes the fee go up so that basically the system is always running. So that's some balance that you have in Ethereum and Bitcoin. And so on our side, it's not that it wouldn't happen if there would be insane usage. And if we were starting to deploy some more complex mechanism like DEVM on, on DV. But yeah. the thing is that we don't want that. Like we, the, the idea behind DV really the, um, the mindset is that we have to keep it lightweight and this is also why the side chain are coming as the great solution because now we don't have to have everything on that blockchain and to face the same issues as others which is yeah you have low fees but now that you have actually activity your fees are not low anymore so that's not yeah. something that will happen to us because the activity will, of course, be on DV, but then anything that is based on services will not be on DV, but it will be offloaded to sidechains. And, and that is how we will basically keep our low fee system, which is really critical because you can see, again, I think we talked about that already, but if you want to use, you want to use Ethereum or Bitcoin when it's like, when it's crazy, it's just, it's just not possible, right? It's only, and I think it ties to the previous topic, it's only with the large speculation and huge profits that people can just, you know, accept to pay $50 to, to move funds around. It's a double-edged sword. Obviously, when fees are high, that means that people have to use their currency or buy the currency at that higher rate. So it, it drives a demand. It, there's two things going on. So we could say that those things, though, are a negative. Why? Because user experience is terrible. Nobody feels good about paying $100 to move some Ethereum 
or to move some, you know, to pay for something in Bitcoin. Nobody wants to pay a high fee, you know, and I'm talking about the USD valuation. Um, you know, so I think that there is a reason that people keep getting in these situations. Miners and validators benefit. Miners and validators benefit when things get crummy. The problem is, is it makes everybody hate your blockchain. <laughs> it's like nobody, nobody likes it. So I think there's, there's the, the goodness about the Divi balance is that you can still reward validators. You can still do all these things. That's the whole goal. That can come from the side chain and that will, in, that will improve the incentivization for those, those side chain validators to support that side chain. And then you have Divi. Divi should be the value transfer or the gas, if we want to say it, behind spinning up these chains. It's a different kind of philosophy, and it allows more people to participate. That's right. And we don't talk a lot about that, but there is the lottery. I think that it is, it is definitely a great thing. It has, we have had really insane stories with it, but I think that there are better times to talk about it. We had to build the other things first. And, and yeah, yeah, I think it will, it will be a topic to talk about. Yeah. But I think the last, the last one that is really the biggest one is we also wanted um, all our communication to reflect the sidechain. The sidechain is really where we're going. Um, it is going to change not only DV, but we believe the whole field, the whole industry, um, the way operations are, are rendered on blockchain and particularly the services. And, and we also believe it will bring some opportunities to private businesses that are absolutely not on blockchain right now and that yeah. would actually find some um, feeding solutions for them with hybrid or completely private blockchains the the side chains allow all of that and and even more so we really wanted this to be a central a central piece of all our communication and and really i can't wait to have the to have the website reflect that and so we we started to do some changes, right? So maybe we can we can start to talk about those changes. So one of the primary target of those changes was Twitter, right? Twitter was not really reflecting DV. It was pretty bland and it was really centered around the DV wallet, which again has been a very important piece of history for DV. However, um, we really wanted to have DV the blockchain, the foundation, the side chains the wallet and everything around it that um, is really DV centered. We really wanted that to be reflected on, on Twitter and we really wanted to have more activity um, to look like we are a lively project because again, we have those new things coming and it, it had to reflect on, on our profile. And one of the very interesting thing is that we've seen that in um, almost uh, three months, right? I think it's what, uh, seven, something like seven weeks, um, we were able to improve our result drastically, right? Um, so we have grow, uh, grown our impression by 86%. Um, we have grown our media views by 1600% yeah. and our video views by 2700%. So. I think it is really based on the fact that we're posting every day, at least a couple times a couple times a day was not the case before. And then we have those videos and we cut them in segments and it seems to be somewhat working. So obviously it is the beginning, but those numbers are very encouraging. It's several thousand percent. Um, I think that it is, it is really validating um, this new direction, at least on Twitter. And, and I think we can talk also about YouTube. You want to talk about YouTube maybe, Vice? Yeah, I mean, YouTube has had a huge change. I don't have the numbers like you do in front of me. I did share some details with you. But the traffic that we're having right now is ramping up to some of the early days, um, not necessarily by quantity because some of the videos have been out there for five years. Um, and so the view counts are there, but the massive amount of, of traffic that's come through the drops and people that are active, people that are asking questions, um, it's thousands and thousands of percent changes that we're seeing just because we're being more active. We're 
telling the Divi blockchain message or we're sharing the Divi blockchain message. I think that's what people want and need. It's what I would want to need. It's like, what is going on? What is happening? How can I help? How can I participate? We're sharing what random string has built in by talking about what the opportunities that are coming. We're talking about the validators. We're talking about the Divi foundations, the desktop application, how you'll be able to participate. Not everybody is on discord. Not everybody was ever on telegram. Many people are, are on Twitter. Um, many people are on YouTube. They're not in these other social media places. So it's, easy to be in discord and go what's going on and then read the thread or ask and then then three people will answer this is what we've been needing to do is tell the story about divvy the blockchain at least from our perspective um tell the story about the work that's being done and has been being done for years in bite-sized consumable pieces some of the segments out there are five minutes long some of them might be 15 minutes long. Then there's the update itself, which could be an hour and a half. Some people will want to watch the whole entire thing. I personally may not do that. I don't watch YouTube videos and stay on it for an hour. I am like those who like the segments who want a 15 minute piece. We're providing those in bite sized pieces in the full buffet, even in some cases. The shorts, like you see, where it's just a, a minute, um, you'll see a statement that somebody may make, like myself or Neegs or, or Rob, and it's a point from the segment, which is, of course, a point from the update itself, version three, four, five, whatever we're on, we're going towards. Um, and, and you get that information. You get an immediate taste of what's going on. And before that wasn't being done, before you're like, what's going on? I have no idea. Um, it, the, the focus was sharing other information unrelated to what we all are, and that is we all are the blockchain. What is going on with the blockchain? So yes, you can be very excited. You can be very happy. I encourage you to participate. Watch those videos. Don't just post what's going on. Watch it. And then, of course, as you've learned, please then share, share that information. So you should be excited that things are happening, things are being viewed. Um, yep, there you go. I can't, I can't share any more than we've had thousands of percent changes. But the number nerds, it's 2000% in watch time in the last 60 days and 3200% mm -hmm. views in the last 60 yeah, days. Yeah, so several so thousand. That's all, yeah. that's all just, you know, we didn't, there's no marketing agency or anything hired. That's really just paying attention to, you know, delivering whatever information that we can on a regular basis. And I, it's, I think it's, I think people are asking for it. We're like, we're like That's wanting right. it. So That's right. And I mean, we're not Go stopping ahead. there. Um, we also, so it's a little bit more complicated to get those updated, but we're also working on uh, getting all the platform that have a description of DV up to date. We yes. work and we have we have a set description that we can update there. We're just in contact and it is just taking a little bit of time to get them to update that, authenticate ourselves and all that. But Correct. we we also making sure that that this will be done. And then and then the next step is um, is the paid marketing. So paid marketing is something that uh, we're really interested into. So first of all, um, it is lacking a lot, and I think it will it will come and complete the effort that we are currently doing. I think that if we weren't doing this effort, the paid marketing would be a lot less effective because they would they wouldn't reach um, up to date data. They wouldn't reach uh, what is coming, the side chains and all that. They would be reaching the previous image, and I don't think it was uh, it was effective. I think that we can. Uh, we can definitely move um, more effectively with that kind of communication now. Uh, doing some kind of marketing effort will start to be um, the right path now. And so that's what we, we will talk about now. One thing that we will also take the opportunity on is um, kind of going in depth on how marketing works on, about around crypto project. I think that um, it is not really well known, the kind of the way things work um, and the way non-organic they they are. So 
I think it would be interesting. Um, Rob, I think you're writing an in-depth article on um, sheet, like a calculation sheet that I did for marketing where yeah. I gathered uh, multiple offers from uh, different companies. And then I kind of made a table with four levels of service and I think a dozen different services uh, yeah, and their and prices. Yeah, I'm going to write an article that, that kind of covers all of that. But, and, but I think the real interesting part to me of that, and I didn't really realize it until like a, maybe a year ago, was that almost everything in our, in our crypto realm is pushed in this math method, like, uh, you know, and, and also in technology itself. But really, if you've heard of it, you've probably heard of it because it, somebody paid marketing people to jam it into your Twitter feed or jam it into your YouTube feed. Um, or get it into uh, the eyes of one of the influencers that you pay attention to. Sure. That's, that's, I, I'm guessing, I don't know the number for a fact, but I'm guessing that's 99% of it, um, of, of what you're seeing in crypto and how you're hearing about things. Um, or if you heard it from somebody, then they heard it that, this way. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's effective. And you pay people to get your stuff above the noise that's out there right now. And that's what, you know, that's one of our steps that's coming up in the future. That's exactly right. Yeah. So in fact, is is really not just crypto or high tech. Um, so I, I used to work in a large company who is like one of the biggest advertiser. And um, I mean, you can see that. Um, so I was a financial analyst there. And what you can see is immediately after something goes on TV, the numbers spike. Like, yeah. it, it's just insane. And <laughs> so uh, this is what um, I would say the advertising has been moving towards in the last few years or in the last decades is the influencer because, you know, we've seen that when someone talks um, to the camera, uh, people tend to be... Um, to reflect, like to be more touch, right? To feel that the message is more for them, it's more special. And that's why the whole advertising has been going that direction. And, and really, I think that uh, old um, press, websites, um, whoever basically in the, is in the business of communication is going to leverage their position, right? Like they, they did work to get there and now they have some influence and obviously they, they monetize that influence. And so yeah. this is what you will see in that, um, in that article. And I we will also attach the document with the, the different pricing. Cause I think it is interesting for everybody. And, and you will see that there is everything right from uh, Twitter comments, from Twitter followers from publication in uh, big news media or crypto related news media. Um, you, you really have everything, of course, YouTube reviews and, um, and really it's the way it works. Right. And it, I think that you could also be thinking that, um, it is eruption or you'll pay to, to get a good review, but you, you're not paying to get the good review. Right, you're just paying to get noticed. You're yeah. paying to be talked about. Yeah, and yeah. and that's the that's the root of the game. And so we will we will present that on the, in parallel. We are also talking with uh, people that are, who are involved in DV. See if they also want to you know help uh, those kind of effort in their on their side. But at the end of the day, it will it will be it will end up in the in the DAO. Um, so. I would really encourage you to read that article, try to understand how it works and be the most involved possible because then um, you will be more, more knowledgeable when you where comes the time to vote. And then again, like if we actually do that properly, it will be an opportunity for everybody because marketing uh, puts eyes on us. And so we can expect that to feel a lot better after that. So that's, yeah. the, that's the idea. I mean, so we... We talked about a lot of things. Uh, we talked about the market, right? We talked about strange launches. We talked about the good things, right? So we have people at least that are in power of sorts uh, of their pro crypto, right? We have the awareness that uh, that um, some things have been passed that are potentially 
pro crypto and maybe consumer safety. Um, we talked about how we are hoping to focus on promoting the features and functions through different mediums, whether it's the website or whether it's YouTube or whether it's Twitter or Rumble or wherever, the features and functions, utilities, the opportunities of the blockchain itself, it being lightweight or vaulting or in, no intermediaries or escrows. We have to talk about all the things that are our products, that, um, that uh, what our achievements are, our history. We have to share the why, that's what that is besides those. We have to talk, we talked about what's coming next. What Neeks has been really focusing on is producing the videos like the one you're watching right now and then trimming that. Um, we did talk about quite a few things. I think that this is a good video, at least to learn and share what and how, where we're going as community members, sharing with community members to really bring awareness back to Divi the blockchain. I think that's really what it comes down to. You know, that's right. I, I've, I, I, I've enjoyed hope, this conversation. And I hope we're doing that uh, properly. We, for us, it's kind of difficult to assess ourselves, right? So um, we really rely on your feedback. And until now, it seems to be pretty positive. Um, we also, we're also waiting for your questions. We've been yes. adding some segments to address some of the questions that were coming. Uh, it's not like there are a ton. There's just one, two coming here and there. And so we can reorient some of the segments that we have and then make sure that we address the, the question directly in the video. So that's why we, there, was, there wasn't really any need to, to go through a special AMA or something like that. I think we can still sp plan a spaces at some point, but we just we I just we didn't should. see. Yeah, we just didn't see the need lately. But again, let us know if there are things that you want to understand more, or if there are, there are details that you want to have. Um, I think that this marketing topic will will open a bunch of questions. So that'll be interesting to go through that, and it is really the for for us is really the step that is coming next right we, we really needed to reshape the the image and Correct. the website will be part of it and then we can start to talk to people outside and be like hey look what we're doing look where we're going and then um, and then restart divi recover uh, the position that we had that um, i think we all believe we deserve so Correct. Um, we so yeah let us know um share the videos share if you if if you see that you heard something in one of the videos and then you understood but you think it could be more clear don't hesitate to make your own content Ask. write an article uh, make your own videos or or also come to us and ask, like you were saying, Vos, ask for maybe recommend us to approach the thing differently. Right now, we're really not uh, going all out uh, as marketing communication. It's a little bit nerdy. It's a lot of details. So it, it is also intended uh, when we will have marketing material, it will be a lot more straight to the point, comparing directly competitors with our ourselves. But right now we're kind of doing the the foundation. So let us know. Let us know what you think is missing, and we'll be we'll be happy to improve. The one thing I want to stress to everyone is if you're watching on Twitter, you can post on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, the comments on YouTube also bring visibility. They also bring activity. They also engage. We will see those comments. If you've read some of those comments that have come back to you. I have answered some of those questions. That brings visibility and awareness. If we openly share, we openly communicate, other people read that are sort of wallflowers. So you have many options to ask questions. You have many options to communicate. The more you do it openly, Twitter, the more you do it openly on YouTube, rumble wherever um the more you do it openly on those the more people see because they may have that same question but haven't asked and then we will obviously reply as community members helping the community working within the community knowing the technology we will happily happily answer and share the why behind certain things absolutely
That's what. That's right. Comment everywhere. Like comment on Twitter. Comment on YouTube. Even if you don't necessarily have something to say, just say hi. It actually really helps us. That's um, that's it the does. way the algorithm works. So yeah, um, yeah. Do that. Share. And again, if you see some interesting thing, something that gives you hope, share it. Share it with others. Um, that's really we we really have a lot of hope. And if you start to feel like that, it's the right time to share it. And also when you see the videos on YouTube, we're talking about gamification and marketing. We're all community members. Make sure you like the videos. Make sure you thumbs up the videos. Um, that also helps the algorithm to create awareness of what's going on. That is not shilling. That is sharing. Um, that affects the algorithms positively so it shows up in other feeds of like kind information so don't just watch watch give the thumbs up watch like it heart it whatever like uh, and, and also sharing it all those things help and that's how we as community members help these kinds of um uh, efforts that are that are going on at least bringing awareness sounds so, good so yeah, I think that we have. Um, I think we have everything in. I think Do you so. Have anything? I think so. Anything You'll else have to, to start okay. cutting and editing now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm doing that with a lot of pleasure. Uh, I actually <laughs> learned a lot of things in in reality. Um, it is it is really interesting, and we're we're improving. I think that I have some kind of framework now, so I think I'll stick with that maybe for a little while. And then again, if you have anybody who wants to build a specific frame or things like that, want to propose anything, uh, propose it. That would be nice. Um, otherwise, we'll just yeah, we'll keep, just keep improving. I'll think if if I can, you know, make things a little bit more clear or look better. Um, and yeah, I think that we'll we'll keep moving forward. There's no reason why people shouldn't also watch Sherpa's videos. He takes time. He does those. He, you have your own com community. Anybody can take their own segments. Anybody can watch these. Anybody can give their own comments. Anybody can cut and share. So when you see these videos, feel free to make your videos from the videos. This is your information. This is your Divi the blockchain. This is all of and for the community please feel free to to make your own you know mediums or media from these kinds of videos perfect sounds good so like share follow subscribe everything and then see you next time all right everyone have a good day and we'll look forward to your comments we'll look forward to your likes we'll look forward to your subscribes <laughs>